VMworld 2012, this is SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is our third year at VMworld. The Cube started in 2010 and now it's 2012. A lot's changed. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante at Wikibon.org, and we're here with our friend, uh, Cube alum, Tarkin Maynard, who uh, we knew, we first met you when you were wise, sold your company to Dell, congratulations, and uh, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. So, tell so you us got that demoted, you got demoted, I, you know, sorry to hear uh, that. For sure, <laughs> for sure. That's so tell us, yeah, yeah, so tell us what's happened with Scoop, so. What went down on the, on the acquisition? Take us through quickly for the folks out there who are interested in how, to, how this all goes down. What happened? So, first of all, I want to thank all thousands of people in the room right now in the audience. Phenomenal day. Great to see you guys both. Uh, last you. time we were at the VMworld again, yeah. uh, I believe a, a 12 months ago. Yeah. So let me uh, give a little bit of context because you guys know what the story is, but for the folks uh, up there, over the past seven years, as you all know, um, we made a big turnaround with WISE, a brand, a company, been around for 30 plus years, 31 years since 1981. Yeah. Um, the company invented the Think Client concept, uh, uh, the Zero Client concept over the past you know, 15, 20 years, basically going after the PC business, Fat Client versus the Think Client, Zero Client, 300 watts versus 5 watts, completely green, uh, basically redefining the desktop virtualization and with that a cloud connected client business what we call cloud client computing business and market and redefining that market itself so over the past seven years as we're growing as we've been growing our business uh, crazy uh, uh, year after year the last year uh, from 11 from 10 to 11 we almost grew uh, um, 60 percent year over year both on margin and as well as on, on the top line revenue as part of that we've been partnering with Dell for the past seven years. Uh, nearly 10, 15% of our revenue came from Dell Channel. Dell was one of our channel partners, put our thin devices. Obviously Dell is second to none on PC business, server business, storage, networking, buying a lot of different companies, great cash position, re transforming the business. Um, and we've been talking about, uh, you know, deepening our relationship. Uh, we were doing some OEM discussions, going to market together. A lot of Fortune 500 uh, businesses are buying our technology together, all those components. You were just talking about, you know, Fusion IO earlier. You know, what is Fusion IO? Is you know, another great technology, basically making the full IT story, solution story complete. So Dell has a lot of those pieces. The piece they were missing is obviously that thin, zero cloud connected device and software connectivity uh, to the back end. So we were partnering very well and we decided, look, it makes more sense for us to have a, a, a relationship one plus one equals three. I know I sound like a typical cliche CEO who sold a company. I just I really, I really mean this. Uh, I just tweeted Omar. Michael Dell and said yeah. that you were on theCUBE and that, that I want to get him. I know he's he here, be. he's I, in the building. I want to try to get him on. And I'll tell you, look, Dell is what? $60 billion plus company. Um, as the founder of the company, Michael is doing a great job coming back to the business, putting his own footprint in the transformation. And I'll tell you in a, in a fun way, I'll, I tell this Michael all the time, um, the way uh, I feel within Dell today, the way I felt with Wise five, six years ago, when we were doing this big transformation and moving and getting faster, mm -hmm. more scalable, more flexible with the customers, delivering value through the chain of the partners. So you were channel constrained prior to the Dell. To so I'll extent. tell you, this is the biggest, you know, you know, best kept secret in the industry. Dell is a very channel so, focused company. Oh sure. Uh, right. it's just, yeah. They have 100,000 channel partners and, and, and as you know, Wise, you know, historically, full channel business, full channel business, 100%. Now we're combining those resources. That's right. Truly, I, the I one plus to, one have, equals two. I have to ask you because go, go. I, I, I took a chance, not took a chance, I did anyway. I, I went public and slammed this idiot blogger who wrote that Dell's debt and they have no chance and, and took a shot at Michael Dell who yeah. is my age and I've been watched his career grow from the dorm room selling modems all the way up to being what he, what he did. Great guy, big fan of, of what Michael Dell has done. This blogger tried to do a Vanity Fair kind of hit piece on Dell saying that they basically suck. So um, I went out and said that's an idiotic move um, yeah. um, by the blogger at Pander, Pander, Pando Daily. Um, and people just don't know about Dell. They see the PC business and they think, you know, oh, they're, learn they're, they're going down, Dell doesn't have anything. You turned around wise. Obviously, you've been anti-PC because you saw the future, right? Mm -hmm. so, so talk about 
why Dell isn't dead at all. Yeah. Talk about that. So let me give you a little bit of context behind that. And by the way, I, I don't, you know, uh, bloggers here and there, I have no idea. There are tons of bloggers, right? A lot of things, some of factual, some of it just, you This know, actually got a lot yeah, of play. Yeah. Was so the, the bottom line is, I don't want to make a comment on something that I haven't read. I'm, I'm not just giving you a typical PR cliche, but I have no idea what this guy wrote. Or, or, but uh, let me focus on this. Let me tell you at a high level. Be, beyond Dell, and the, uh, let's look at the industry today, IT industry as a whole. This is very important. A lot of people miss this point. It's very important. Next interview, ask this question. Today, when you look at the IT space as a whole, it's a $3.5 trillion market. 3.5 with a T, Tarkin, T, trillion dollar market, of which $400 billion is all about hardware, $300 billion is all software, IT software, and about $800 billion is all services. So that's 1.5 for you right there. Another $2 trillion. Another $2 trillion comes from all telecommunication services. Mm -hmm. Both hardware, combined software with utility, and all the services around telcos, what Verizon, AT&T, China Mobile does. So $3.5 trillion of that, about $1.5 trillion is all about IT, without the telco side of things. Right. Dell is what, $60 billion company? It has about a 2% market share. There are probably another three or four companies like Dell. Let's look at that. 2% market share of what? When you look at it, there's complete of IT, IT oh, everything yeah, yeah. combined. Are you following, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so $1.5 trillion business, when you think about the leading companies, Cisco, uh, let's look at obviously Dell, IBM, HP, let's add Oracle with the Sun acquisition, but it's like a smaller company in, in terms of size. When you look at the industry, how can you discount Dell? You must have no clue what's going on in the business to discount a giant like Dell. It's a, it's a, in a sense, is leading in the transformation from the PC business now in an end-to-end -end solution a business. A lot of cash in the bank. Great cash position. Yeah. Look at the industry right now. If you're a financial analyst, if you're an investor, where is the opportunity for upside? It's an amazing upside. And when wow. we, by the way, let me tie this to my story. When we came to Dell as a, as a business, acquired, we're looking at this and going, as a team, we did not have one retention issue. All my employees are continuing with Dell because they're seeing this is a huge upside opportunity well, the upside into, the, into the future. You've got a $60 billion company with a $20 billion market cap, right? So they're, and they're trading an amazing at, you know, cash pen, position. In the dollar. It gives us flexibility. You saw the acquisitions from Wise, Ecologic, Compellent, Sonic Wall, all the leaders in the We all just right, bought well, so Dell, You're building if, a software, you know, Dell a software. Asks, First of all, if Dell asks us my opinion, we could help them, but here's my angle as an analyst. <laughs> as an, as an no, analyst. We can help you. Yeah, you need to buy our, some no, of no, our I, I buy, I buy what you say, but I buy what you say, but I want to just say this. Apple Computer has product leadership and only has 8% market share in the PC business and including uh, PC, and not including even mobile. Yeah. Okay, so Apple's the most valuable company on the planet right now and they only have 8% market share. If they take that 8% market share on the, on the hardware side to say 15 with their services that they're wrapping around it, mm. that's going to be very interesting. So what I'd like to, to see from Dell and what I would advise them to do is help me understand how you can use the, the hardware business that they have great leadership in keep that share yeah. and sequence and wrap around it, whether it's IT and love or other it. services. John, I love your, you know, you know, these simple questions you asked me so I can give you like a great answer for <laughs> this question. I love you, the piece of furniture you have on your desk with your Apple 300 watts and non-green PCs <laughs> that you have in front of you. I love them, looks great, actually looks great on my furniture as well, white furniture I have, uh, fantastic, but how many businesses I got you believe, how many, how, many, how many public organizations and private organizations are gonna still continue to invest heavily on infrastructure, which is not secure, which is not manageable, which is not reliable, which is not scalable, which does not provide better CapEx and OpEx. This device, what, $1,000, $2,000? We do at Dell devices starting at $25 with cloud clients connecting to the best service storage and network in the back end. We have the best store in the marketplace. Look, I was listening to Fusion I earlier. You have a phenomenal story with storage. What is the Fusion IO conceptually when you think about it? At the end of the day, is another flash drive to your PC, imagine it on a server for your storage. Fantastic story, great, but it's a piece of an overall story. As Dell, we are the only company that have all the components, have the cash position, acquire, market, OEM, also other assets with the new software franchise we're building as well. On the top of that, on the top of that, it is a big opportunity for the next 10 years as cloud becoming more prevalent and ubiquitous in the marketplace, both on the server side, networking side, and at the same time on the client side. Well, and then, uh, Michael Dell is taking this personally, right? I mean, he, he helped crush the mini computer age. I remember Ken Olson said Unix is snake oil. 
Digital died, Wang, Prime, all those guys. And I see the, the PC era CEOs, put Bomber in there, they have a lot at stake. They have a lot of personal pride. And, and Michael Dell got hev heavily involved in the company strategy and started you know, personally getting involved right. in these acquisitions. Putting these piece parts together, whether it was Perot, the storage side, you know, the thin client piece, um, but still, you've got that dynamic Shoulder that bank. I was talking about earlier, $20 billion market cap for a $60 billion dollar company because the old is declining faster than the new can, can pick up. And so you've got that, that dynamic going on. So it's a matter of, okay, when does that flip? So when do you hit that tipping so point? Look, Almost like a startup. Absolutely, and in a sense it is. Yeah, and also back, not only in, the, in terms of size, but in terms of feeling, yeah, yeah, the yeah, passion, yeah, yeah, the yeah, employees yeah, have. Yeah. I feel I'm in a $65 billion business, $60 billion business, everybody's acting like it's a you know, $20 million startup. And that kind of a passion goes a long way. Look, I was just this piece past weekend with a customer on email. It's a large New York-based customer, big financial institution, trillions of dollars of transactions they're working on. We're on email going back and forth. The customer goes, I cannot believe as Dell, you guys are so focused on a customer on a weekend, and everybody was touching us and talking to us about this transaction we're working on. So m my point is, look, as long as you have the right product, right people, right processes, market is there. All I'm trying to tell you with the numbers, 3.5 trillion dollar market, guys. It's a huge opportunity, a huge upside. We have the best cash position, best, best people, best acquisitions, and all the IP coming together, big software franchise now, and these devices at the end of the day do not matter. At the end of the day, these devices you, are you gonna are, come and go. What, what, what's important is the delivering of the content, okay? Any type of content, voice, data, video, from any app, legacy to web to mobile to any user, and manage that user from the cloud, and that's our vision, that's our story, yeah, so you at were, end. At, at Citrix Synergy, when you were on, you were really amplifying, you were probably one of our most passionate guests ever. Talking about the impact of mobile, obviously. Still am. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, with mobile, now it's other things, but talk about your vision of the new experiences, because big theme for Paul Moritz, yeah. got a standing ovation. He's this awesome, new I era, love this Paul. New, this yeah. new era will introduce new user experiences, new consumer, yeah. customer experiences. Talk about what you see as the new customer experience. So, so I'm, I'm not going to sound cliche on this, this is really important. Every single customer, public sector, private sector, as you guys know, 50-50, we do a lot of business in public sector, defense side, also commercial side globally. But we're seeing as people definitely going social, definitely mobile, definitely virtual, definitely, definitely converged. This is hugely important, a lot of people miss that. In the back end converged, with storage, server, networking, computing, through virtualization, one fabric, and also converged in the client. Imagine devices under 25 bucks delivering for you voice, data, video, one box under 10 watts, which means you don't need anymore a, a, a power connection. It's all PoE, power over the ethernet, delivering to you in one monitor your virtual PC, in one monitor your voice over IP phone capability, and one monitor is your TV with a GPU built into it. I have devices now with quad core, a, 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 a dual core um, on devices running things that you never run before. With that kind of a capability converge in the client side and the back end side and going contextual with that in the cloud is a story, which means we now dealing with a new kind of a you know labor labor force in our customers. They are definitely social. They're expecting their employees to connect with the customer and partner through social media. You need to secure and manage that. We have the solutions for that. They're definitely going uh, obviously mobile. Every user like you, they have a laptop, but going to these kind of devices. And you how you provide security, manageability, availability, and TCO for that, both on capex and opex, and at the end delivering any type of content, voice, data, video, from any type of app for any user, at home, at work, on the go. Some of the big banks you are doing business with, all the employees are going home. Work at home programs, now you need to deal and manage and secure the user, regardless of those devices or these furniture pieces, which is 300 so watts, I got, I got not green. All, right? I got Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah, furniture yeah, yeah. piece, no, 300 watts. But so Get I got, it open, get a thin I got three here, I got two in my, my bag. Yeah. Are you saying these are going to consolidate? That's I, your, that's you your, know what, what your, we'll your see prediction? is there are going to be all these devices in my opinion, on the margin, on the, on the, on the innovation, there's going to be a lot of opportunities. But the key thing is how you deliver. But the key, guys, the key thing is content. Content is king. How can you deliver voice, data, video to any user from any app on any device? Yeah, it's and all about that experience to me, right? What else? Okay, so we and and so doing it, do it in a smart way. Secure, manageable, available, reliable, with the best TCO and scale. To make that happen, you cannot have furniture pieces like this. You have to have an end-to-end, -end security manageable story. 
Why are we buying? Why, we, why are we buying Quest? Why, why did we do the transactions with, with, with Wise, Sonic Wall, for Stan, Case, uh, Compellent, Ecologic? There's RNA a storyline here. There is a storyline really here. And we have the cash position to make the change yeah, yeah, no happen. Doubt. Tarkin, so I got to ask you because since VMworld going back to tw uh, 2010, 2011, the, the kicked around end user computing, VDI, all that stuff that you've been involved in directly, uh, and now with the market changing, uh, we've had uh, David Flynn on the CEO of Fusion I, you were listening, you know, his company is really changing what's now possible. So there's new possibilities, new use cases, yeah. new experiences. Absolutely. What does VMware and the industry have to do at the end user computing? So you got the data center of the future, multiple clouds, big data, all these are new forces that have been emerging very fast in the past 24 months, and now the end user experience is changing. How is that whole world? What specifically, you got social cast, I mean, I wouldn't say VMware's knocking it out of the park at the top yeah. of the stack. I mean, they got some stuff. Here's, here's, um, look, we don't have a, a long time, but I'll give you my two cents on this. Have you uh, bought a new car lately? I mean, buy the new 2013 models, 2012 models. When you open the engine, what do you see? Do you see the spark plugs? Do you see the uh, yeah, Fusion see IOs it. and AppSenses and, and Atlantis computings of the world? All the innovation top. is built in. Yeah. Look, my vision is, our vision as a company, when you look at this end to end, give this user experience from your iPhone or whatever device you like, all right? Whatever device you like in terms of aesthetics, application, software, security manageable, the, all the concepts that tie into you as a user, which is most important and accentuated through the content delivery, voice to the video, and app support in the back end, whatever that app is, on any device from any kind of a data center, anywhere in the cloud, to make that experience seamless, and as cheap as possible, while making margin is I, the is the future. I and we believe, we believe, we believe. As Dell, we have the best converged story in the back end, best converged story in the network, and best converged story in terms of content, apps, and users in the front end, in the client. And not only on our clients, our entire story around security management and availability is for any client. I have customers using iPhones and Apple devices. We still secure and manage them. We still deliver the content for them. We cannot necessarily look at this as a, as a, as a whole trend specific to the device. It's beyond the device. It's all about the content and app, and that's what we're going to focus well, on. Well, one of the things about Dell, too, is it, it does, Dell, Dell definitely doesn't have a not invented here syndrome, right? Because Dell didn't have any IP before it started on this track. So it buys in IP, and then focuses on integration. That's where it spends I think I agree, I agree with your vision. Agree with so let me, let me react for, for a second. Look, I, I don't know how many patents each company has in the world, but let me tell you, there's a lot of misconceptions about, about Dell. Um, IP is not only the software that we think about, it's also processes and some of the other things that a company does. Um, okay. That's for sure, Dell probably historically did not focus on software as an innovation right. as much as the pure software companies in the marketplace like Microsoft and Oracle. That was not business model. It was a different business model. The beauty of Dell is, created a segment, led in it. Figured out that things are changing and now it's transforming itself over the past four years. Uh, with Michael's leadership and the executive team and all the changes we're making, and again, as I said this, I, I, I know I'm sounding like a broken record. There are a lot of CEOs you can bring to this table and they can tell you a lot of uh, stories, but guys, cash is king. We generate cash, we manage it effectively, we buy the right IP when we believe the IP is needed, and we're building the right IP with the best people in the industry now. So look, Dell is going to be a force for sure for the future. Huge upside opportunity, in my opinion, in many different ways, as an employee, as a customer, as an investor. And I believe as the, we're building this end-to-end -end stack, again, from data center to network to end user, around the user, not a device, not a server, not a storage, around the user, how you deliver the best service to that user, to the best content and app, uh, support in the back end, whether that's voice, data, video, that's the story. And we have the best story behind that, it's secure, the manageable, the available, the reliable, TCO, CapEx and OPEX, and scale in the back end with the software and hardware we have. You're not going to beat that kind of story with any other vendor, I'm telling you. Okay, Tark and Maynard, Dave, I think this brings I'm, up- Am uh, I boring you? No, no, yeah. I just no, think good we got to get- Dell making we, itself we, relevant, yeah. that's really get, what this is all about. We got to get rolling, but yeah. I think you make a good point about the whole end user computing being enabled and transparently abstracted away, that under the hood, if you will, that's going to put a direct challenge on VMware because VMware is trying to put products out there. So I wonder if VMware is having that internal conversation. By, by the way, on, on that note, John, very, very quick, I know you guys need to move on. VMware, Citrix, Google, Microsoft, all these software vendors working very closely with us. The reason we are one of the biggest sponsors at this event 
a huge, big uh, CIO, uh, CXO innovation event on Thursday. As you know, Pat is going to be there. Paul is coming. We're bringing Citrix, Google, Microsoft, all sitting next to each other and talking about the cloud client computing and how we're going to deliver that content and app support from the end to end, from data center to the client. And you will see there how we're working with all these vendors. Even some of them are competing with each other at the end of the day. Our goal is to make sure the market is bigger, not only our market share. Make the market bigger. Again, $3.5 trillion market, guys. $3.5 trillion, okay, <laughs> with a T. The market is huge, and everybody has a huge opportunity. Okay, Tarkin, great to have you on theCUBE. You're awesome, Thank you. great dynamic guest. Nice. Yeah. He's pumping on his ninth coffee. I need one, I'm gonna take a break. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Tarkin, great, great energy, love to have you on theCUBE. And again, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.